Welcome to The Real Craven County Schools podcast. Today, I am privileged to have Holly Tolston, our Director of Career and Technical Education. Welcome. Thank you, Jennifer. Glad to be here. Well, it is so nice to have you. And I know that there is a lot going on with the beginning of the school year. So we definitely wanted to have you on so that you could share all the great things that are happening in CTE. Um, I'm happy to. First, can I clarify what CTE is for the audience? Uh, well, that was my first question. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> so, well, you go right ahead. Okay, great. So CTE is Career and Technical Education. Right. Um, that, I did say that right, right? Yes, you did. Okay. Yeah, we, we call it clarify. CTE for short, but a lot of people, I don't think, understand what CTE stands for. Right. Um, at, back when I was in high school many moons ago, it was vocational education. Yes. But we have since rebranded um, our offerings, who we serve, and um, the programs we offer, and uh, updated our image to be career and technical education. That is fabulous. So tell us what that means. Uh, it really means that we're preparing students to be leaders in a global economy. We want all of our students to be successful. Our job is to work with students as early as fifth grade to help fit, help them figure out what their career goals are. Because um, as you know, I've shared with you in the past, college is not an end game. That's right. The careers are the end game for every student. College is a pathway to get them there. And some of our students will require a four-year college degree based on what they want to do with their life. But others may only require certification or technical training or a two-year degree. Um, and, you know, studies have found that once students can identify what their career interests are earlier, and we get them on that pathway, that they tend to stay on that pathway and graduate and then go on to become successful leaders in our community. Well, when I'm out in the schools, it's always very exciting for me to be able to see CTE in action. So I am definitely a visual person. And I think if I were back in school today, compared to the many moons ago, as you nicely said, um, that I would probably be one of those students that was very involved in CTE because I love the opportunity to be able to explore different careers because one day I might want to be a veterinarian and one day I might want to be a chef or I might want to be both. So tell me how you're able to fit all of those needs into our schools so that we can prepare our children for the things that they want to be in the future. So as I mentioned earlier, we start with our fifth graders, exposing them to career opportunities. Um, and then when they get into middle school, we have college and career ready labs in all five of our middle schools. And this gives students an opportunity, as you said, to explore different careers, work together collaboratively to work through modules on these careers. There's some video clips and hands-on activities in CTE we pride ourselves on the hands-on opportunities yeah, for learning. That's the part I love um, so much. Absolutely. And then <clears throat> when they get to high school, we try to place them in a pathway that's related to their career goals. And we know, I mean, I was the case as well. What you want to be as a freshman mm -hmm. may not be the case by the time you get ready to graduate. And right. that's okay. Yeah. Um, but in high school, once they get into a CT pathway, this is where they really have a lot of hands-on learning. Um, and they're great because in CTE, a lot of what they're learning in core classes, in their English classes and math classes uh, and science, the students are applying in their CTE classes. Uh, for instance, in our woodworking pathway, students are, have to understand fractions, right? Because they have to make those cuts and be able to measure angles and things if they're building projects. In our engineering classes, the same thing. They have to understand um, science and, and um, path, not pathways, um, the things they're learning in science um, to help them understand um, the physics of engine that go into engineering. And then in the healthcare, right, we right. have health science pathways. And so they're learning what, what they learned in biology or anatomy they're applying in their health science classrooms. So, so tell you mentioned the word pathways. So do you by chance know how many pathways we have? Because I'm sure there are a lot. So in our high schools, um, that's the three traditional high schools. And we have a CT teacher in one of our early colleges. We offer 29 pathways wow. for our students. Now, in middle school, I know we have some new course offerings this year because I know you talked about how important it is to start planting those seeds early. Mm -hmm. So do you want to talk about some of those things that are happening in our middle schools? Because I think that that is so important. 
right? So in our middle schools, we have um, keyboarding for our sixth grade students because that is a very important skill that everyone needs. You mean not um, just the thumbs and the... Not just the thumbs. I actually have to use the whole QWERTY yeah. keyboard, right? I still remember A-S-D-F-J-K-L yes. semicolon. Yes. So we have keyboarding. We have some business classes. We have some STEM and engineering classes. Uh, one of our middle schools has an exploring healthcare class. Mm, that's new this year. Right. Uh, no, actually, that was a pilot. It's only a couple of years uh -huh. now. Um, but what's the newest is the College and Career Ready Labs. So we had those in three of our middle schools. And this year, we were able to add College and Career Ready Labs to our the last two middle schools. So wow. now all five middle schools have this lab. And, you know, as we were implementing these, because it's a costly effort, you know, every time we'd implement one, the other middle school principals were in my ear. When am I getting right. one of those? Because like a bunch of kids. Exactly. <laughs> because they would tour them and they were just amazed sure. at the engagement, and the collaboration and the students coming in, knowing exactly what they were doing and using every minute of that class time to work on whatever module they were working on at the time. Well, I think one of the things that we probably hear a lot, and you probably hear this out in the community, especially possibly with our retirement community, is... What about whatever happened to brick masonry or whatever happened to automotive? And that's one of the things that I always want to say is we still have those things. So how, how do you dispel that myth? Because I know that you probably hear it a lot as well. I do. Um, <clears throat> because I, don't, I think the other thing, too, that might not necessarily be hard, but maybe people don't understand, is that we're trying to tailor careers that students are interested in today. True, but we're also trying to prepare students for careers that haven't even evolved yet. Correct. So I work closely with our community partners mm -hmm. and industry partners. Um, I sit on many boards and councils in Craven County because it's my job as director to have my finger on the pulse of what our community needs are. That's great. And to work closely with our Workforce Development Board, um, NC Works, the Community College, which is a huge post-secondary partner of ours. We collaborate and work together frequently. But it's our job to to build a workforce and a pipeline and try to fill the needs of our community as well as prepare students for, you know, what they want to do. Right. So when when we're looking at what courses and pathways we're going to offer, we certainly take in what the students are interested in, but we also have to offer where the needs are, mm -hmm. right? You know, so students can make a livable wage when they get out of high school, whether or not they go to college or technical training or right into the workforce or the military. Uh, we want them to be ready so that's they can right. contribute. Well, another thing, too, that I know that's been really impactful is our partnership, as you mentioned, with the community college, but also with the new Volt Center. Yes. So has that helped in the CTE world as well? I think so. Um, so the Volt Center is fairly new. It's only a couple of years old. Um, they are the local workforce development training center for the community college great partners of ours, um, and they offer training, everything from a short-term, you know, two or three-day training to several months or a couple, you know, a year's training, just depending on what the students' interests are. But we work closely with them. We identify students who, you know, may not have a plan, mm -hmm. right, especially our seniors who get ready to graduate and they still don't know what they want to do. And, right. and that's okay because they're 17, 18 years old. But, you know, as another effort and another opportunity to expose them to what's there is we bust those students over to the Volt Center. We bust, I mean, we take them to Craven Community College as well. But the Volt Center for those students who aren't looking for long-term training and just we want to provide them with a skill so they can complete that training short-term relatively and then go right into the workforce and help fill our needs here in the community. I want to go back because you. I think I skipped over. You mentioned about Brick Mason yeah, and automotive. Myth. Yeah. So we currently do offer automotive. Actually, it's only offered at Havelock High School at this time. Um, Brick Mason's a, a great skill, but there are few and far between now. And our, our Mason companies are having a hard time finding people. Mm -hmm. The people who are doing that work are getting ready to retire, and there are fewer people coming in. You know, many years ago, there there became a – a thought process that every child needs to go to college to be successful. And we, we know that's not true now. We're right. trying to change that narrative. I think we keep talking about the three E's. We do. We yeah. do. Um, and, and, I, and I don't know if you've hired a plumber or a brick mason or a mechanic lately or an electrician, but 
Like they're making seventy five dollars an hour. You know, last I checked as a teacher, I didn't make that. Right. You know, with the degree, seventy five seventy five dollars an hour is probably low too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there is so much opportunity in our skilled trades, and so much need. I was speaking with someone recently, uh, a business partner here in the community who was saying that their HVAC people who are employed could literally walk into the office. They have three on staff and they build large apartment complexes and go to the boss and say, we're going to leave today if you don't give us each 10 more thousand dollars a year. And the boss would go, okay, because these laymen, these skilled workers can, they can, right. they can name their price now. Yeah. They're needed. There's so much opportunity. Yes. Yeah, so uh, we don't offer brick Mason currently, um, I will say that sometimes funding particular programs like automotive is a very expensive venture. Right. All the equipment. And we like our students to learn on what the industry standard is currently. So, you know, when you take your car into the Ford dealership and they hook them up to these com- these large computerized mm-hmm. pieces of equipment, that's what we want our students to learn on. So when they're all ready to go into the workforce, they already know how to use the equipment. They're um, they're, you know, we have to pay it annually to have the lifts inspected. So there's a lot of cost involved. Not that that's a huge deterrent, but also finding someone to teach. Right. Because the gentleman that currently teaches automotive for us, who's wonderful, he's an ASC certified mechanic and worked in the field for years, which is exactly who we want teaching our students, Right. He he really could walk out the door today and probably go make a whole lot more money as a mechanic, but he just loves teaching. But then adding that program to another school, finding someone to teach it can be difficult. Right. Can be difficult. Because as you know, teachers don't make what their value and what their worth is. Of course. And we talk about that on here as well. So now tell me, I know with the beginning of the school year, you've got lots of things that are coming up. So share some of the things that are happening, because I know that they're very exciting and I look forward to attending them as well. Yes. So later this month, um, we are partnering with the Volt Center and the college and the Home Builders Association to bring in the Be Pro Be Proud truck, which is the large 18 wheeler yes, truck that had has it. all it's the been skills. Fabulous. Yes, fabulous, fabulous opportunity. So they'll, they will be at the Volt Center on September 27th and 28th. And we're bringing our middle school eighth graders through to tour that. Um, so that's a two day event that's very exciting. And then October 17th, we're having our fourth annual cow fair. Yeah, I'm so excited. And I know you want to cow ask me what is a very cow misleading is. because it's not it a cow. It's so not a cow. What is it doesn't it? go moo. It is a career on wheels fair for all of our district fifth graders. So in one day, we will bus in all 1,000 fifth graders to the community college. And we usually have anywhere from 30 to 40 participants. Uh, and when I say participants, I mean fire trucks, um, the Fab Lab from FRC East will be in attendance, ambulances, hearse, boats, motorcycles, NOAA Weather Station will be here, um, Duke Energy will be out there, New, um, New Bern City will come in with all of their utility the trucks department. and street sweepers and the police department, ambulances, and there's a helicopter and a big rig truck, and there's a... Uh, we had the Swamp Monster last year, which the students loved. And we've got dump trucks. And, I mean, you name it. It's so exciting. Um, it's a day that the college and we look forward to every year. And it's the talk of the town. The fifth graders say it's the best field trip they've ever been on. Oh. And so. I always enjoy walking in through and seeing everybody because, I mean, they are very engaged and very actively learning. Very engaged. And we encourage our participants to make it as hands-on as possible for the students so right. they are engaged. Well, good. And anything else that's coming up that you want to share? Well, I mean, there's always stuff going on. We've already had, our, we're only a few weeks into school. We've already had field trips. We had students last year um, visit ECU, their College of Technology and Engineering, uh, to learn about the pathways and opportunities and the majors that they offer. Uh, we've got trips planned for our students. Our next big district event would be in February. Yeah. Every year we do the CT Expo, and that is for our eighth graders. And we host that strategically just before high school registration. Perfect. So we rent out. Thank you to the C1A yeah. who funds this um, event for us. We rent out the the convention center we bring in our community college partners 
We bring in our high school teachers and students, and we bring in our business partners. So what we're trying to do is we want our eighth graders to see, number one, the pathways that we offer at the high school for them, but also to see that if they're interested in health science, maybe being a nurse or a physical therapy assistant or whatever in that field, they can take these courses, talk to high school kids about what they learn in those courses and how enjoyable they are and what hands-on things they get to do. But then right next to the high school is the community college partners. So then there sits Dr. Alec Baldwin with his teachers and instructors and students, right? The direct pathway. Direct pathway. And then right beside them, we got the hospital set up. So then the kids can talk to the hospital about what jobs and careers are available in our community right. in the health field. And we do that for all of our pathways. It's a very engaging day, very um, active, a lot of drones are flying and 3D printers are printing. We got chickens and rabbits over here and over here they're blowing up a tire for the automotive teacher. You know, just lots of hands-on engaging activity um, for kids. And we they leave with a color book, not a coloring book, but a colored um, curriculum guide. And the plan is that they take it home and they talk to mom and dad and say, I saw this today and I saw this and I think I might want to do this. And if they take that along with their major clarity results, maybe that'll help them figure out what pathways and classes they want to take in high school. It reminds me of what color is my parachute mm -hmm. live and in action mm -hmm. and personalized. Mm -hmm. And so you're actually having everything right there in front of you to have the ability to be able to talk to and learn firsthand. Sure. So you mentioned major clarity. Everybody might not know what that is. So Major Clarity is a college and career ready plat a college and career ready platform that we use um, that students can access and parents can see as well. And students um, take career assessment inventories. So based on their strengths and what they might be interested in, it'll give them results of what occupations and careers they might want to investigate. Right? It um, is a place to create a resume. Um, a place to apply for the FAFSA as they get older. There's all kinds of short videos and, and information about careers. So it's a great place like for students. Hub. It is. It's a it's a hub. And I, I don't know if the community is aware yet, but there is new legislation out that starting this year, prior to promotion from eighth grade, students have to do a career development plan, which is great because, as I said earlier, the whole goal is a career. So let's start now talking doing some of these it. assessments and talking about it and see where their interests are and show them what it looks like to do that career. And then they'll revisit again each year and it may change. And that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Because I keep saying, I don't know what I'm going to be when I grow up. <laughs> and here I am. Exactly. So I really appreciate you sharing all the great things that are happening in CTE. And I hope that our viewers have had an opportunity to learn. And if they have more questions, what's the best way? Please reach out to me. You can email me. It's holly.tolson at cravingk12.org. I'm always available to answer any questions and I'm here to help. Well, we really appreciate it. Thanks again. Thank you.